What's up? I'm here doing some investigative journalism with Zachary Lopez. What's up, Zach? Hey, Ezra. So I'm meeting you for the first time. Yeah. Because we once had beef. We did. In this season, we're increasingly trying to bring people who had beef together, especially internet beef. So this is the first time we're meeting IRL. Yep. So let's explain how we came to have beef. And did we have a flame war on Twitter? It was a pretty low grade flame war, but uh, I certainly was getting uh, notifications from your fans for about a month and a half Shout out to the fans. So I think that counts to a certain extent. Um, I mean, we kept it pretty civil. Yeah, we did keep it pretty civil, which I think is is why we can actually come face to face today. I mean, I understand that like there's different power dynamics with different critics and different musicians. You know, Mm -hmm. when someone who has like 7 million followers calls, you know, some young woman that has, you know, 150 followers and just wrote something on her blog and, you know, calls her, you know, a dick or something. And then, you know, I think that that could be abusive, but... I think, you know, I'm, I'm 40 and I'm a, just an old man. I think it's well within your purview to, uh, to, yeah, uh, no, and to, I, to, to and take I, issue with anything a critic says right. and then they can have a conversation or not. And I, and I appreciated that, that in, in our low grade flame war, you never shamed me for merely talking to, which is something that happens on the internet a lot is that somebody says something that provokes somebody else and somebody is provoked and say, why'd you say something provocative? I disagree. And the person says, why, why do you care? Leave me alone. Yeah. So Ed, you didn't do that. So, so let's explain I'm pretty great. how this started. Yes, yeah. you are. First of all, I should say I'm a fan of music journalism. I was once a music journalist <laughs> well, myself. <coughs> I wrote, I wrote one, <laughs> I wrote one um, review for dusted magazine. Do you know? Yeah, are you sure, familiar with dusted? Sure. I wrote it like a test review. Is that Doug Moss Ross Rock? Is that dusted? Yeah, I think yeah. he was involved in it. And it was, I wrote one test review of a Dirty Projectors album. This is before I ever met anybody in Dirty Projectors, and they published it, and although they changed some things. Was it a positive I, review? Yeah, it was positive. And I wasn't very happy with some of the changes they made, but whatever. I love music journalism. It's formed the way I think about music, and I'm a former music journalist myself. Let's put a pin in that. Play some music. So I, I knew who you were from following music journalists. You sometimes write for Pitchfork. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vice. I, yeah, I want to clarify that yeah. I, I don't do reviews for Pitchfork. You don't do? I, oh, oh, really? I only did humor. Oh, okay. Quote unquote humor. Right. Okay. And so you also write for Vice. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know for sure, but I had a feeling like you made some snarky comments about Vampire Weekend before. But again, nothing that nothing that seemed like truly offensive. Everybody likes different stuff, and you know, nothing that bothered me. But so here's what bothered me. I heard a friend tells me, "Did you read this essay about New York that was in Vice?" And I said, no. They said, oh, it's going kind of viral. And essentially, my friend said, it's an essay about how everybody's moving to L.A., but they're never going to move to L.A. They're loyal to New York, and they're talking about a lot of things like gentrification and, you know, why they love New York and why they think moving to L.A. is corny or something. You tell me if I'm... It was... It's a tough one because I think a lot of times when people say, like, oh, it's just a joke, you know, that's a way of sort of... Then you, you can't take issue with it because I, I was kidding. Right. But... It was, and perhaps it failed at this, it mm-hmm. was intended to be a humorous essay, you know, touching on serious things. I mean, basically, Vice wrote me or called me up and was like, hey, will you r- write an essay about how you're never going to leave New York? So, but no, I mean, yeah. And, and I think here's I think, the thing. And here's the thing. The, so then my friend says, yeah, my, my, my brother really liked it. These are like lifelong New Yorker types. Um, but there's this one part where they kind of diss Vampire Weekend. And this is before I even, I knew who wrote it. I heard about it and I was like, oh no. <laughs> what did they say? I don't remember. You should go look at it. So when I got home, I looked he, at he it. He totally remembered what it was. He, yeah. just, he didn't want to be the person to tell you. What Perhaps. It yeah. So then I see it, and then I'm like, or, I don't even know. Somehow, I I saw that basically there's a partner where he said to everybody who's moving to LA, take Vampire Weekend with you. <laughs> and let's let's be clear. I mean, it, yeah, it yeah. was a throwaway line. I know. Okay. Here, I know it was a throwaway line, but be, because the essay had elements of humor, but also touching on serious topics... Mm-hmm. It, it bothered me more than normal. And, and also, I think at one point I saw that the uh, the music critic, uh, Jessica, uh, Jessica Hopper. Hopper, had specifically highlighted that line. And I have nothing against Jessica Hopper. She is a great journalist. Well, I, I do want to just, just because I was going to say this at some point because I knew it would come up. I do want to say that I think uh, a lot of the criticism you guys have gotten is unfair. Some of the criticism you've gotten from me is unfair because I, I do. <laughs> I, t- I mean, I take, I certainly have always aspired to be more of just a writer Period. And I know that sounds really pretentious, but that's, yeah. that's I am. I'm kind of pretentious, and I, and I, I. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I more than I want to be a music writer. So I've always been more interested in is this entertaining to read? Is sure, this stylistically sure, yeah. interesting? But see, seeing somebody who I knew had negative feelings toward Vampire Weekend, and I'm, I'm not questioning her credentials as as a critic. Specifically, shout out this line as if it was this really funny thing. Take Vampire Weekend with you. <laughs> Again, I I have to say like. 
I think it's really corny when, when uh, and I see this all the time, you get a bad review and then somebody writes, you know, it's okay not to like my band, but, but actually your grammar is terrible. And actually you don't know what um, syncopation really means. And you don't know what a half note is. And like, I think that's so corny. It's so condescending when it's like, somebody didn't like your music. Like, trust me, I know people don't, not everybody likes Vampire Weekend. And even just to say Vampire Weekend sucks, Vampire Weekend is corny, my voice is whack, all, all that stuff I've over the years been able to deal with. The reason this sent me off, and I think it was because I saw this line highlighted by another um, somewhat well-known music sure. journalist. I was like, hmm, I know this is supposed to be like a satirical piece, but it hit home for me because I felt that Vampire Weekend is somehow in symptomatic of like new horrible you know, capitalist New York that's driving out real New Yorkers and stuff. I think that's a fair way of taking it. It's not, uh, it wasn't my intention. You know, I mean, I've over the years taken a lot of pleasure out of, you know, disliking your band, but obviously, but just in a sort of general, almost theoretical well, way. Yeah, like every, and then, everybody needs their punchline. Right, I have my punchlines. I can't say them publicly, but right, I have no, my of course, you're in a, you know, yeah. no, of course, and I have that luxury of, because, you know, because I'm unsuccessful in a lot of ways, I can just be, I'm always punching up because, you know, there's there's very, you know, <laughs> Why not? very few people below. It's legit. Um, it was totally just a cheap shot and the piece would not be diminished in the slightest if it had been omitted, you know? Right. So certainly in retrospect, when I sort of had to like, all of a sudden deal with a human being whose who's feelings I had hurt. You know, I regretted the line. You know what, man? I'm going to stop you right there. Let's listen to some tunes. You also, and I think I said this to you later because we, we started emailing afterwards. It's one thing for somebody to say, Vampire Weekend's pretentious. What can I say? Somebody says, oh, Vampire Weekend makes me think of annoying Ivy League stuff. Again, I went to the school and, right. and I, I went I, I went on TV wearing a cricket sweater. I, like, I, can't, I can't say anything about that. But there's something specifically about and, and this goes beyond you. There's something specifically about me seeing like gentrification, like New York changing. And maybe I have my own feelings about so many people moving to L.A. and even the fact that I have to spend increasing amounts of my time in L.A. That made me maybe with some sort of guilt about the fact that, you know, my dad grew up in projects in the Bronx. And now I've become a symbol to somebody who doesn't even know me of something. But yeah, that, that it made me really want to like clarify something about my relationship to the city. And is that because you did something so bad or because I had a chip on my shoulder that I needed to get off? I think more of the latter. You know, you've discussed a lot of this stuff before um, in terms of your relationship to, to New York. Um, yeah, yeah, you discuss this stuff, but then sometimes you feel like you talk about it in one interview with like a, a sympathetic journalist. But sometimes you feel like, eh, whatever, people still just going to make you a punchline. And if they want to turn you into like the gentrifying like monster or like Eric Trump or something. And, right. And this, is me <laughs> react, this is me being really reactive. No, of course. I mean... Well, I mean, I thought one of the things that was interesting when we were emailing back and forth was, and I thought really like a, a point that you sort of made to me that kind of made me kind of wince because it was a fair, yeah. I don't think you were even trying to take a jab at me, but you were sort of saying, it's just having someone who moved here for the arts and the culture, like I did, right. and then to be sort of taking jabs at someone who is certainly more from here than I am, who is... Yeah, and I don't even like getting into that, like, but, who's... Yeah, but it's a fair, you can yeah. though. It's our history. I've always thought, like, who's a real New Yorker, who's not a New Yorker? For me, I'm fundamentally from the tri-state area. I was born mm -hmm. in Manhattan. Uh, mom was born in Manhattan. Dad was born in the Bronx. Grandma and Grandpa were born in Harlem, East New York, uh, um, the Bronx. You know, it, it, great, great grandfather, Lower East Side. So, to me, I, I never get into this whole like New Jersey is not part. You know, I'm from the tri-state area. I'm, I'm, no, I New Jersey, grew. New Jersey hardcore is is an essential part of New York. <laughs> yeah, well, know, no, and there, also I there, think there, I, there'd be no Rorschach, right? And, if and it weren't it, for New Jersey. And I think I said to you in the thing that it's hard to shake that feeling of that um, when you see somebody make a joke, and, and part of your brain tells you it's a throwaway joke, and part of you has a feeling like this person hates me. Sure, I, I have an enemy. And in fact, that's something I also want to talk about is because. One thing that's been interesting to me about Twitter, which in many ways ruins lives, yeah. causes anxiety, depression, or, or I, let's say exacerbates. Exacerbates, it's, yeah. It really... Yeah. Romanticizes. It romanticizes. It's, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a brutal place in many ways. But one thing that I like about it is because deep down, I always... I love Twitter. I, I never fully bought into this whole musicians versus critics as like natural enemies because straight up, there's a side of me that's a music critic. And I even feel like I only wrote one review. I technically wrote two reviews. But also, the way I think about music is so deeply formed by growing up, reading zines, even Rolling Stone, Magnet. I had a 
got his, his subscription back. It's so deeply formed by music criticism that I really think music criticism and making music are so tied to similar thought processes. You're a musician and, and a critic. So I never liked this uh, kind of false dichotomy of like, well, you got the, the critics who wish they were musicians, then you got the musicians doing something pure and they naturally hate each other. And it's been interesting to me to sometimes, it's been good to remind myself, follow, I follow a lot of music uh, journalists on Twitter because deep down, like, even though some of them don't like me, like, those are my people. Like, I like the way that music journalists think. And sometimes I see the way that music journalists act. They have their own haters, too. Oh, yeah. I think Twitter made everybody, like, it used to be the musicians were at the most vulnerable, but now everybody's vulnerable in a similar way. Now that a lot of critics sort of operate more as cheerleaders of for musicians until, you know, one musician stumbles and then they all pile on. Right. Um, but generally, they, they're all like, they're all about being positive positive. They now they just really attack each other. I well, mean, because I, I, on on Twitter we're all just we're all just individuals. Whether your background is making music, writing about music, anything, we're all kind of there equally. Hey, what's up, McConan? Hey, what's up? Hey, man, you're here on Time Crisis with Ezra and Jake. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing, man? We're over here just processing the loss of musical legend Prince. So we wanted to reach out to some of our friends and uh, you know talk about what what he meant to everybody. Are you a fan? The thing in my life was Prince. It's like the first song I ever danced to was Prince's Party Man off like the Batman soundtrack back in the day. Really? And yeah. So like that was a big, that was like my first song I ever danced to. And like I was, you know, that was like, I loved Prince ever since then and stuff. It's just everything about him. But uh, me and my mom were joking because I started this song, Man of the Party. Oh yeah, of course. I love that song. Yeah. That was like, now, now you're like the man of the party. Remember when Prince was man of the party, you were dancing to Party Man? Now he grew up and you know so that was like that little thing about that but man Prince was a f- legend man like he know how to play all these instruments and like just putting on new chords and new sounds and new looks and just pushing the envelope so far for even people like me to exist now and be blessed to have a career you know in this music industry so I'm just like I'm sad but like very honored and just thankful for Prince you know what I'm saying yeah, for sure it's very hard to imagine the musical world how different it would be without him so Zach I really appreciate you coming in I'm very happy to meet you um, thank you I know you, and, 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 here, and here's the truth is that like you have been a very like re- respectful person I, I definitely I, I do have to take some responsibility for slightly overreacting but I'm glad I'm glad that we got to talk because the, the first the main thing is not so much like sometimes we human beings we get set off you said something things get lost in communication but over the long term you were a good person you were you're willing to listen to me hear my point of view you didn't like you didn't like roll over but you you know you treated me like a human being and you yeah you didn't you didn't say any of the the kind of like oh whatever man who cares like and and i appreciate that well yeah no so i i'm really glad and uh of course the the downside mm-hmm. of all that is um you know there's a good reason why a lot of times critics and musicians shouldn't be interacting on Twitter or shouldn't, you know, because... Right. But it, maybe the, the genie's out of the bottle now. Well, here's the thing, because <laughs> yeah. uh, I was I was thinking about it a lot. I was yeah. like, uh, you know, and I made jokes about it even on Twitter.com uh-huh. being like, I'm running out of bands to make fun of because right. I keep meeting all these f***ers. Right. And, um, you know, but uh, obviously the world of criticism, the world at large will not be diminished by me no longer being a d- about Vampire Weekend, you know, and... Uh, but there's, there's just, and there are so... I, my list, my list right. is so long, and there's always somebody new coming. And the truth is, maybe see you soon, Spoon. Right, <laughs> and maybe you'll figure out other ways to critique Vampire Weekend, even brutally critique Vampire Weekend. But anyway, before you go, we, we, I've been primarily talking to you as a musician to a, a music journalist. But as we said, you are a musician too, and like I said, those roles are very fluid. And um, so let's listen to some music from your band. Uh, Thanks. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and tell me a little bit about your band before, oh, okay. and then announce the song. I'm in a band called uh, Publicist UK. Uh, th- great name. I'll make, that's a great name. Uh, yeah. The, well, there was already a band called Publicist, which obviously we wanted to be called just Publicist. Yeah. But then out of uh, loving tribute to, you know, London Suede and Shelton's UK and things oh, like yeah. that, we just threw the UK. English beat. Uh, English beat. Yeah. Exactly. What song should we play? Um, let's Canary. But you're going to do Canary. Okay. You know, let's play two songs. What Canary in the, into what? Uh, Canary into Levitate the Pentagon. Okay. Also great name. Thank you to my guest, Zachary Lopez. Thank you for my, having my me. My former low-level flame war 
And maybe, and maybe someday again. And maybe someday. We, we really can't. This this uh, this conversation Inshallah. definitely does we'll do not, it again. Does not mean we'll, we'll never have a flame war again. But uh, here's Publicist UK with Canary, and then Levitate the Pentagon.